After four plus years of grinding Fortnite competitive, I failed to go pro. Okay, well, kind of. In OCE, I made 3.15k earnings, was top 80 PR, signed many paying contracts with orgs, and so on. But I was only ever a tier 3 player at best. So the big question, why did I fail to go pro? Well, let's get some backstory to my Fortnite competitive career. I started playing Fortnite back in Chapter 1 Season 2 and only started playing competitive Fortnite once the first tournaments began to happen, which was back in early 2019. For a while, I was just okay at the game. I made earnings here and there in World Cup and sometimes here and there I'd also pop off in a tournament. But nothing really happened much until it came to Frosty Frenzy where I absolutely popped off. Then from there on out, I made a bunch of grand finals and got a lot of solid placements. But then, for the last few years of my career, my improvement came to a halt as I got sick of the game and stopped caring about improving or going pro in general. And while yeah, me literally quitting the game gave me no real chance of going pro anymore, the thing is, I stayed a tier 3 player for at least a couple years, so there must have been a reason I didn't go pro in that time, right? And after years of pondering this, I've came to a few conclusions. The first one is that I didn't realize how hard it would actually be to go pro. I want to be what millions of people want to be, but only a few hundred are allowed to be. What I'm trying to say is trolling around in friend groups, not trying that hard, playing other games, etc. is fine, yeah, if you want to be an average player, because that's what almost all average players do. But what I needed to do to go pro is do what most people wouldn't do and consistently grinding the game every day doing what's best for my improvement not just what I feel like doing. And I just needed to stay away from the distracting things like other games and distracting friend groups etc. But there was something else way bigger that stopped me from going pro and it was about me avoiding my weaknesses. As a lot of people can relate to, I hated solos for most of my career, as well as fighting against especially good players. So I just grinded scrims, VOD reviewing, and when I did do fighting practice, it was either against worse players or in team game mode arena, etc. Notice a pattern here? I avoided doing anything that involved me having to heavily rely on my own fighting skill. And this really came back to bite me on the butt later on down the road. As in many situations in team game mode tournaments where I actually needed to heavily rely on my own solo clutch ability and fighting skill, I wouldn't know what to do, would be mad nervous and so on. The only reason I was a tier 3 player was because my game sense and eye gelling was so insane that it just balanced out my weaknesses. But the problem is, to be like an actual top pro, you must be at least great in every skill. Which I actually did realize in the last year of my competitive career, so I started fixing it. But then as I actually started to improve in that area, I started not to care about the game anymore and it was too late. This is why I advise to anyone to start out their Fortnite competitive career by becoming insanely good at solos. This is because they literally just force you to become good at every single fundamental of Fortnite competitive before you move on to the team game mode stuff. I didn't do this and just instantly started out with the team game of tourneys, leading me to having no confidence, no solo clutch ability and no fighting skill. And it sucks because this issue is only harder to fix as you get better and better at the game. Because imagine me doing really good in trio scrims because of my game sense and eye gelling skills. Then I go play solos against worse players but get destroyed. I'm even more likely just to go running back to team game mode stuff where I dominate because it's comfortable. You really need to start off your career the right way bro. 